My name is Alex Livingston, and I'm a sophomore student at Tech Valley High School in Albany, New York. And I won the Texas Instruments STEM Behind Cool Careers contest. I entered a picture of my hobby that I plan on turning into my career, flying. The contest grand prize included a behind the scenes tour of McKinney National Airport here in McKinney, Texas. I'm also going to meet an airline captain today to get some tips on what it takes to become a commercial pilot. So let's go into the hangar and meet our pilot and take a closer look at the math and science of flying. Hi, hey, Captain. I'm Alex. Hi, Alex. Adam Schindel. It's good to meet you. I've been looking forward to meeting you. Um, I was wondering if you can answer a few questions. You bet. What, what do you have? First of all, um, how did you uh, get into flying? I started flying when I was in college. The university I went to had an aviation program. I got a degree in professional aviation. Started flying as a flight instructor at the university. Worked myself into a job flying a small uh, twin-engine aircraft. Then we ended up flying uh, corporate, uh, flying corporate uh, jets for a few years, and then my current job, I'm an airline pilot for Southwest Airlines. That's awesome. So, being a high school student, uh, what would I need to study to become a pilot? I remember in junior high school learning a little bit of algebra. Uh, you know, you learn how to solve for x, and I just yep. think to myself, what in the world do I need to do that for? <laughs> we do it every day, all day long. Your uh, math, uh, your sciences. Uh, you'll learn a lot about meteorology as an airline pilot. Oh, really? Or as a pilot in general. Basically, all the STEM classes will lead you along a great path. Wow, I didn't know that. That's awesome. So tell me about this bird. This is a Global Express 6000 uh, manufactured by Bombardier. Uh, it holds 17 passengers, has the capability of flying uh, from sea level straight to 51,000 feet. Wow. And has a range of uh, about 6,000 miles. So a person could take off in this aircraft from North Texas and fly to most destinations in Europe and as well as Asia. Wow, this plane is awesome. Well, Alex, uh, you caught me at a great time. Oh, I was really? just getting ready to do an external pre-flight walk around. Oh, and wow. we'll start uh, right here at the entry door, work our way around the nose, and finally end up right here where we started. Okay, cool. Let's go check it out. Okay. So what are the kind of things that we check for while doing a walk around? We look for uh, hundreds of items as we're doing our walk around. The big three are, it sounds kind of funny, obvious damage, uh, leaks, and missing parts. Mm -hmm. and we also check the general condition of the windshield. Uh, the pedostatic system will look at the probes to make sure they're not clogged. Okay. And uh, the general condition of the skin, and as we look around the airplane, it's kind of the general condition of the leading edge uh, as we're coming around. And we'll work our way around the entire aircraft as we go. Okay. Tell you what, let's go take a look at the cockpit. Oh, cool. Well, Alex, let's take a look at the flight deck here. I bet this is a little overwhelming, huh? Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Well, let's kind of take a look at what we have up here and compare it to something that you're familiar with. Okay. So, Alex, on our primary flight display, we have on the left-hand side, we have our airspeed indicator. Okay. In the center is the attitude indicator. Yeah. So it gives the relative position of the aircraft pitch yeah. and roll-wise, right? And then we have a, the altimeter on the right-hand side. Uh, right down below, we have a DG, a directional gyro, so it gives us our heading. Okay. So how do you extend the flaps? Because I know in takeoff and landing, you need them to create lift. Basically, what we need to do is alter the shape of the wing slightly to create more lift. So if you were looking at a cross-section of a wing, you know how it's flat on the bottom and curved on the top? Yeah. So you remember studying about Bernoulli's principle? Yep. So if you had a, a molecule of air, two molecules of air touching the leading edge of the wing, one goes over the top and one goes over the bottom like that. Yeah. Uh, the one that goes over the top covers the longer distance, right? Yeah. So when you add flaps and slats to, the, to that cross section, if you were thinking about the wing, it would change it from that to even larger like that, right? Yeah. So that, that air has more distance to travel, therefore creating more lift. So we would use this lever right here, and as you notice, it has slats and flaps on the okay. same lever, right? So for takeoff, we would use the leading edge slats and a small amount of trailing edge flaps. Oh, okay. And uh, that will increase lift. Uh, for landing, we would extend the trailing edge flaps a good deal more which would increase lift, but also increase drag. So that'll change our angle 
yeah. uh, of the air aircraft flying, so it gives us better forward visibility and allows us to fly at slower speeds so we're set up for landing. Wow, that's a lot of math and science going on there. I hope this allows you to continue your studies in math and science. That would be a great path to a career in aviation. Thanks, Captain Schindel. I really enjoyed our tour. Well, thank you, Alex. You're cleared for takeoff.